Welcome to Read This Book, the Summer Reading Edition. I am Lisa Von Drasic. I'm the curator of the Children's Literature Research Collections of the University of Minnesota. And joining me today is... Uh, Megan Coker, and I'm the curator for the Doris Kirshner Cookbook Collection, and also a science librarian for food science and nutrition, animal science, and soil, water, and climate. Nice. Nice. I'm Carolyn Bischoff. Uh, I'm the uh, physics, earth sciences, and astronomy librarian, and I, I'm over in Walter Library. Mm -hmm. Carolyn, we're going to start right with you because I am looking at the title of that book and I'm dying for you to talk about it. So what is the title of that book? The title of this book is Backyard Ballistics. And I'll just read what's on the cover. <laughs> Build potato cannons, paper match rockets, Cincinnati fire kites, tennis ball mortars, and more dynamite devices. And I brought this because, well, I don't know about you, when it gets warm out, I just really want to light stuff on fire and blow things <laughs> up outside. You can't do that in the house no, during the cannot. winter. That's one of the downsides of living in Minnesota, I found. Um, but the, the wonderful thing for me about summer is going outside and starting bonfires and spending time at night. And I pulled a couple of examples of projects from this book that really spoke to that pyrotechnic in me. Um, one is called a Cincinnati fire kite. Have you heard of this before? No, no. not at all. <laughs> I'm even from Ohio. But. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So apparently, um, apparently, in the 40s, there were some people enjoying their evening around the 4th of July. And over a tree line, they saw this thing that was glowing and appeared to be on fire. It was rising over the tree line. Um, and uh, that was the first Cincinnati fire kite. And so these, this book has a pile of projects um, for kids and adults alike, I think, um, just speaking for myself, um, that involve blowing things up, projectiles, stuff like that. So the Cincinnati Fire Kite is one of the easiest projects in the book uh -huh. because it only involves a newspaper, some tape, and staples, hmm. and matches, I should say. <laughs> also. Um, so Basically what you do is you take a newspaper and you fold the corners in, staple them up, tape up all the edges so you have a pocket of air, and then light the four corners on fire. And it should lift up into the air. Well. Because what is the scientific thing behind that? Well, it's kind of like a hot air balloon. Ah. So the air heats up inside, inflates, gets more less dense than the air around it and rises. Not to bring you down, but how safe is this? Um, there are safety guidelines in every chapter with every mm -hmm. project yeah. yeah so would this be the it's you about know, as safe as lighting a, anything on fire have a grown-up with you when you're have a grown-up with you yeah. yes yes who's the publisher of this that's a good question chicago review press oh i love them yeah, yeah. so i i will vouch for their ability to um create books with easy to follow directions. And I've used a lot of their books with kids. I would yes. say fifth grade and up for lighting things on fire. Yeah, easily, yeah. yeah. I mean, or maybe children watching on as parents um, yes. do it from so, a distance. Yeah. Um, but there's um, a, there's a, the, the nice thing about this book is there's physics explanations with right. everything too, and mm -hmm. historical stuff. There's a lot of interesting tidbits with every single project. That sounds great. Thank you for bringing that to us. Who wrote this book? Uh, the author is uh, William, and you're going to have to help me here, William Gerstel. Yeah, I think sounds about right. Well, oh, thank you. Yeah. I want to hear about the cookbooks. Oh, we're on to cookbooks? All right, the first one I have um, is an old cookbook from 1972, um, The Vegetarian Epicure by Anna Thomas. And the reason I pulled this out for the summer is that Deborah Madison was just here. And she talked about this book um, as influencing her and being, you know, when she was learning how to do vegetarian cooking and trying to cook for this, this uh, group of uh, Zen Buddhists, that there was really nothing exciting out there in vegetarian food. There was very little to look at. It was all brown and drab. And that this book was um, one of the first things that came out that was really exciting and had good food that was fun to make, that looked nice. Um, and that they made the, a lot of these for special occasions and things. So I have had this on my bookshelf for years. I've used it a little, but now I'm really inspired to go back and try 
some more of these recipes and to sort of look at it with a new perspective. You can see it's well used. See, this yes. is this is how we know a well loved cookbook. So yes. let me find your favorite recipe. <laughs> Ah, you like rice. I do. I like grains in general. There you go. Oh, see, kasha. Mm -hmm. Now, I have never made kasha, but I really like to eat it. What's kasha? Kasha is buckwheat groats. And I only know that because when I said, what's kasha, someone said it's buckwheat groats. <laughs> groats. And um, it's large grains of grain. Let's see. And of it says it, 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 it comes in a box, skinny little box. It reminds me of it's quinoa. Or, or more like steel cut oats. Yeah. Mm, okay. Oh, oh, and it's real chewy and it's great with like a mushroom broth. Ooh. And, so good, and like a bow soup ties. Mm -hmm. And bow tie pasta. Yeah. So So this is an interesting thing too, like looking at this like historically if you look at cookbooks. Like you'll find grains like kasha and you wouldn't find things like quinoa where you'll find right. that now. Like the way that things change and the things that we incorporate and reincorporate back into our diets. It's just really interesting. Oh, thank you. Thank you for bringing. I, I remember that when you when you were sitting here, I went, oh, I remember that one. <laughs> this and Diet for a Small Planet. Mm -hmm. Those were the, the two biggies. And you'd go to the health food store and get everything out of bins. <laughs> it was I very exciting. <laughs> yeah, but this yeah. was, I'm older than you, in the 70s. We won't talk about that anymore. Anyway. So, so yes, yeah, so um, we have exploding things. Mm -hmm. We have um, vegetarian things. Um, oh, it's so hard to decide. When I think of summer reading, I do think of, you know, salads and eating fresh food from the farmer's market. And I, I actually do think of projects you can do outside. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when kids are going, it's I'm bored. Well, we can fix that right away. Let's light something on fire. Um, and I also think of great reads. So I brought two really great summer reads. Um, one's a new book, one's an old book. We'll start with Undertow. Undertow by Michael Buckley. Now he's known to people who hang out with kids as more of a light, funny, um, uh, early chapter book kind of guy. And I, don't, I think this is his first big fat novel. He's a big fat novel. Um, it's a fantasy. I think you can tell by the cover. It's like a tent city on a beach and there's an indication of what's going on and I'm not giving anything away by saying we are, it's set in Coney Island sometime in the near future. Um, creatures who have been living for thousands of years at the bottom of the ocean breathing as sea creatures do under the water. Some look a little like what we imagine mermaids look like and others like scary monsters that you'd never want sitting next to you on the subway. They are quarantined in Coney Island and somebody has the bright idea to integrate the schools. So we see it from the point of view of a girl whose dad is a cop who is forced, and I won't even tell you why, but she is forced to make friends with one of these alien creatures. It's heart-pounding adventure. So that's Undertow, Michael Buckley. And when I think of a great fantasy read, funny, fabulous, it's The True Meaning of Smek Day by Adam Rex. Now, it might sound familiar because a movie called Home is out right now, it's a cartoon, but this has the underpinnings of a great novel as well as fun satire. Um, the main character, her mom named her Gratuity because she misunderstood what that meant. So her nickname is Tip, and Tip's mom goes <laughs> missing. And she and all the human beings are, um, are moved out of the way to make room for the aliens who have invaded. So they've taken over all the cities and all the towns and they've quarantined the humans on reservations. So you can see where that's going. But Tip stumbles in a 24 hour store like a 7-Eleven or Wawa, or in this case, the Mopo. Um, and over a alien and the alien is a boove, that's their race. And the true meaning of Smek Day is in honor. It's like uh, having a uh, uh, the true meaning of Thanksgiving. 
essay. So the book is written like an essay from the point of view of Tip, and she stumbles over this alien boove whose name is J-Lo, because that's a common Earth name. <laughs> And it just takes off from there. Oh, so um, I, I highly recommend The True Meaning of Smack Day. It's, it's a great read, not only for kids who love fantasy, but if you love cartoons, Adam Rex is a great illustrator. So there's a lot of that embedded throughout. Thank you for joining us today and sharing your special picks for summer reading. And um, join us again for Read This Book.